Now, at about the same time, Mexican archaeologists were beginning to recognize that archaeologically there were cultures in the interior of Mexico with a very Mesoamerican look to them. And they extended in a broad band north and south of the Tropic of Cancer. They, uh, basically, they extended very much where Paul Kirchhoff, uh, a little later on, drew his line. Tropic of Cancer comes right about here. Tropic of Cancer is important in, uh, to uh, astronomers in that it is the northernmost point in which the sun at uh, the middle of the summer reaches the zenith. North of that point here, for example, it never does. South of that point, it reaches it twice. And the same thing is true uh, in the opposite direction at the Tropic of Capricorn, often south, uh, south of us, south of the equator. Now, there were, these sites are hundreds and hundreds of kilometers north of uh, uh, the uh, later line, the line the Spaniards found at the northern edge of Mesoamerican civilization. And there were some incredibly big sites. Probably the best known was one called La Quemada, which was down about here. But there was also one called uh, Alta Vista around here, both in Zacatecas, a modern state of Zacatecas. One near Durango City in Durango called Schroeder, and sites running as far north as the northern Durango town, modern town of Zape. But, you know, Mexican archaeologists had such an incredible wealth of stuff going for them further south. The Tenochtitlan, Teotihuacan, the great Maya sites. Oh my gosh, everything. They had very little time and very little money to spend on these northern sites, exciting as some of them were. As early as the 1930s, American anthropologists were beginning to rethink uh, the Southwest uh, Mexican connection. For example, Elsa Clues Parsons, who is the doyen of uh, uh, Southwestern ethnology in those days, uh, first in 1933 and then in her great Pueblo Indian religion in 1939, suggested that uh, two Mexican gods, the god Quetzalcoatl, did you forget to? Pointer for you. Oh, bless you. <laughs> the god Quetzalcoatl and the god Tlaloc. You keep those in mind because I'll talk about them later. Um, were uh, heavily involved in the Kachina cult, which I'll also talk about later. And she seems to be comparing Tlaloc with a Hopi god, El Toto, father of Kachinas, as it's sometimes, she's sometimes called, and his uh, counterpart, Zuni Batiwa. In 1943, getting a little bit more up in time, the Sociedad Mexicana de Antropología, in a symposium entitled El Sur de México uh, y el Norte de México y el Sur de Estados Unidos, the north of Mexico and the south of the United States, um, took up the subject, and a number of people were involved in it, and particularly uh, a, um, a, an American southwestern archaeologist named J.O. Brew, who was uh, quite famous at that time and quite influential, he believed that uh, the um, Tlaloc was really the uh, god behind the Kachina cult. And he thought that the, um, Mex the southwestern culture after about AD 1300 owed a great deal to Mesoamerica. Well, uh, other people had different other opinions, but uh, both, both Mexican and American archaeologists all agreed 
that um, the, um, it's a subject that ought to be worked on. Somebody ought to put some money and some field work and some people into that area. And this happened after the war. Uh, in the interior of Mexico, beginning in the um, early 1950s and continuing till his death in the late 1990s, uh, J. Charles Kelly from Southern Illinois University with um, his students and some of my students, I was also there at SIU, and colleagues, both, both American and Mexican, uh, worked first at Schroeder. Let's see how to work this. Ah, here we go. Got it turned wrong, haven't it? There you go. Oh, well. uh, first at Schroeder, which is right about here, and at Zappi, which is about here, and then later at Alta Vista, which is roughly about here. Okay. Uh, the, um, now here he found societies which the Mexican archaeologists had already pointed out or existed, although they hadn't done much work on it. He found societies that clearly had the signature traits of Mesoamerica. There were large towns with temples, column talls, metallurgy, ball courts, massive structures with astronomical implications, concentration on both the solstices and the equinoxes. The sites had evidence of militarism, very militaristic, very warlike outfits, uh, with um, mass human sacrifice that seemed to be tied up to war somehow, and um, brilliantly painted pottery, priesthoods, with serving Mesoamerican deities that included a northern manifestation of Quetzalcoatl, the, the sun god, and the uh, Venus, uh, the representation of Venus, also the divine twin, and, uh, the, um, and, uh, and represented uh, as a plume serpent often, or a horned serpent, and Tlaloc, the ancient god, very ancient, goes back to 3,000 years, god of rain and mist and uh, of uh, secondarily fertility. There was, unfortunately, no indication of writing. It would have been nice had there been. Now, this band of interior sites, I'm sure I've got the wrong right end of this this time. It's backward from the one I use. So I, okay, this northern group of sites here along the um, uh, Tropic of Cancer had largely disappeared by about 1100 AD. Uh, in fact, it started disappearing long before that. The um, last phases of Schroeder, um, now I've got it right, right in here, may have lasted as late as, uh, oh, maybe 1100. And, uh, but uh, pretty much gone, you know, several hundred years before the Spaniards came. 